There are 326 of you guys just waiting for this to begin. Thank you so much. Before we even get started, I'd sincerely appreciate if we obliterate that like button, do us that favor, and obliterate it. What's up, everybody? So many chats coming in. So many chats coming in. It's honestly amazing to be with you guys today. It's the first video I've actually been able to get two quality pieces of content out, so I'm extremely happy to be bringing you guys even more content. Like I said, you guys have been killing it. The channel's been growing exceptionally fast, so I'm gonna give you back what you're giving to me. I'm gonna work harder every time that you guys are giving me more, so thank you guys. Today's video is going to be, you know, a, a, the double-edged sword. I wanna outline for you the realities about the journey that we're going down, the realities that 99% of people won't be able to win this game. And it's not because they won't have the opportunity. They will, you will, and you do. The problem is that you're not ready for the challenge. Because if you think that this whole crypto journey is just gonna be a one directional rocket ship, if you think that this is just gonna be all gains and no pains, then you are in for a very rude awakening. You're in for a very rude awakening because there's a lot of rich people out there in the world and they don't want you to be rich. They don't want you to be part of the biggest wealth transfer in the history of mankind. Of course, why would they want that? They see it as a zero sum game. They don't realize that we're, we're actually creating new types of wealth. We're expanding what wealth is. As you can see with the way that crypto market caps expand and contract, it's actually not a zero sum game. But thanks you, thank you guys, thank you for the super chat. Uh, LSB, you're welcome. What we're playing right now is a very, very volatile game. And there will be many times that your emotions will be shaken. There will be many times that you wanna quit. There will be many times that it looks like the game is not a winning game. And that is why 99% of people will not have what it takes to get through this journey. This is not a one-day journey. This is not a two-day journey. This is not a one-year journey. This is a multi-year journey. Pretty much we have four-year cycles in crypto, but I believe they're getting a little bit longer. I believe that they're not going to be as precisely four years. I think that you know the next cycle after this one might actually take two halvings, right? Who knows? But I think that it's important that you guys understand that this is not about immediate gratification. Although there is a ton of that going on right now in the space, I think that this message needs to be heard right now because what we see here is the opportunities they're pouring in. And if you don't have the focus and the understanding of the length of the journey, then you're not gonna be able to make it. What are my thoughts on Ergo? Um, I actually uh, don't have a thought on Ergo right now. I'm gonna get through my first, my topics. I'm gonna try to stay with the Super Chats, but then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna have some Q&A at the end because I have some stuff planned for this session, so I don't wanna get it interrupted, right? So what I wanna say is that the main message of today's content is that 99% of people will not be able to handle this crypto journey. And if you wanna be part of that 1% that does, you will be part of an amazing journey but it's gonna be hard. And if you think it's gonna be easy, you need to understand that you are dead wrong. And I'm gonna prove it to you right now. So let's hop into some of the content I have planned. Let's get my webcam filtered up, cropped so I'm not blocking the screen. I didn't accomplish that. And here we are. Let's get it there. All righty, so what you see in front of you right now is a list of the amount of times that Bitcoin crashed six times in total, significant crashes, not momentary crashes, but big crashes, 30% or greater in the last bull run. Now, each one of these is going to happen again. It might even happen bigger and worse in this particular bull run because the stakes are higher now, right? The world's eyes are on us. And so if you think that this isn't gonna repeat itself, that Bitcoin's gonna be a nice little slip and slide up into extreme wealth, you're just gonna change your life by you know, hitting the button and yeah, you, that's all you gotta do. It's just hit the button and you'll be rich. The reality is that most people won't be able to handle this, right? Most people won't be able to handle these pullbacks. They won't be able to handle the sentiment change. Just look, I see a lot of people in the chat talking about Ampleforth, right? How many people 
uh, went from extreme bull mania on Ampleforth to extreme bear euphoria, right? Those swings can happen so fast that it almost boggles the mind, right? And so what I want to impress upon you is that no matter how good something seems, no matter how sure this journey seems, you will have days where you want nothing more than to sell it all, than to cash it in, and to get out. You'll, ha you'll have days where you end up losing big, right? Because if you think you're up and you think that you've won the game and you think you're just going to ride this up, you're wrong. You've never been to the casino before and you're going to put more money in because like any sensible person, if it looks like every dollar that goes in is just going to make you more money, then you're going to keep putting more money in. And one day that new money that you put in is going to overcorrect back 30, 40% and you're going to wonder what the heck you did. You're going to wonder what kind of risk you put, you put yourself in. And those kinds of moments are going to leave you on the sidelines if you mishandle them, right? I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you the truth that this is going to happen. This is coming. We haven't seen this happen since the bull market, the altcoin bull cycle started. But this is going to happen. If you don't believe it, you're going to see it. And if you're not ready for it, if you're not mentally prepared, if you don't have the warrior's mindset, you will lose. This is a mental game. This is an emotional game. It is a financial world, but it is mental and emotional more than anything, and you need to be ready because these good times that we're, we're in right now, these good times, guys, I've been making content for three years on this channel, three years. Do you know how many days of them have been nonstop bullish? Do you know how many weeks we've seen day after day of 50, 100% growth through coins? I can count them on my hands, right? This is not the norm, and so if you get used to this, you get cozy, and you think that there won't be rocky roads ahead, then you're not ready for how difficult this journey would be. And so that's the message that I wanna impress upon you right now, because I want you all to do well. I want more than anything for you to do well. And in order to do that, in order to help you do well, I need to give you the reality, which is that 99% of people won't make it. They're gonna lose, they're gonna quit, their hands, they're not strong enough. So that's just the reality. Meanwhile, we have a prediction here by Kraken, which is, I think, one of the better exchanges in the world, and they're predicting a Bitcoin boom of about 200%. That'll put us a little bit well within the range of the low 30,000s. And you better bet your bottom dollar that if Bitcoin ends up surging to the low 30,000s, that we will enter into, once again, a period of Bitcoin mania. And you got to be prepared for some of the alts to be drained by this. But I'm going to show you some things that I think are critical to understand. And I'm not saying not to buy Bitcoin. I'm a big Bitcoin believer, and you should always be looking to stack your sats. Those are for your grandkids. Don't forget. But this, this is happening. Bitcoin is looking ready to absolutely explode. And it's not just coming off the amazing news that Kraken's bringing to us here. You know, they're predicting a rally between 50 and 200 percent. The report notes that Bitcoin po posted a 21-month low volatility for July 24th of 23% and stated that Bitcoin's 12 historic volatility lows between 15 and 30% have typically been followed by a rally of 140% on average, right? So this is just data. Past performance is not an indication of future performance, but this is a phenomenal data point, right? And we've been seeing the volatility drop. And with that volatility drop, we can expect some serious moves for Bitcoin historically to the upside. We also see that July is usually a terrible month for Bitcoin. It's a sort of late summer sizzle down, the dog days of summer. We have January is by far the worst. If you haven't been here through many Januaries in crypto, I can tell you it's bad weather and bad gains. It's, it's usually one of the worst months. A lot of sell off at the end of the year, uh, you know, whales cashing in, they're buying gifts, they're taking trips, they're trying to reconcile their end of the year finances if they're big you know, financial players. And so you know, January is horrible, but July for some reason is a slump normally. So to see what we saw in July, to see what we saw in August, it's setting the stage for a monstrous Q4, especially the 100 days before the election, as we've covered before, are always, almost always, right? Not always, nothing's always, but almost always extremely bullish. And if we've seen any kind of messaging coming out of the White House, we know that we're seeing a policy leaning almost exclusively towards pumping the economy by any means necessary. The economy must go on. And so the next few months, I'm expecting to probably defy gravity despite the realities of the American economy. And I personally believe there's a high probability that that will go on 
potentially indefinitely, right? That's my belief, is that this time could be different. If you didn't see my episode where I interviewed Mike McGlone from Bloomberg, it's very, very, very good information we covered. It's huge macro analysis. Mike is a genius, and I don't care anybody who's talking nev- negatively about Mike because he works at Bloomberg. He's part of the establishment. Mike is a good guy. I've known him for years, and he does great work. So I, I highly encourage you to, to pay attention to what he has to say. But if you're looking for a big green flag on Bitcoin, look no further than the man himself, Dave Portnoy, Stool Presidente. If you guys haven't been following the cult that is Barstool Sports and essentially this guy, Dave Portnoy, uh, the long and the short of it is when coronavirus pretty much canceled all the sports, this guy, Dave Portnoy, who started and runs Barstool Sports, started talking about stocks. And he almost created a meme-like sort of personality that became this cult following and he started pumping stocks like crazy and he had a tremendous amount of success. He actually commands a tremendous amount of influence in the space. And so when he met up with the Winklevoss twins earlier, you know, this was something that we had to make sure we covered. So we're gonna play for you uh, the video here and you're gonna get a sense of how this all went down. Uh, here's just the, the highlight of it. I don't wanna play a 10 minute video here, it's too long. Um, but let me know, uh, let me just check my, uh, my video manager and make sure you guys can hear this coming in. We're gonna play this for you. This is the Winklevoss twins meeting up with Dave Portnoy earlier today. Yeah, and if Elon Musk might, you know, push it and all of a sudden Right. Like do We're like buddies. He's yeah. going to run for president. Yeah. Maybe you guys and, will push and, it. We um, can all become Bitcoin billionaires on the Dave coin. <laughs> yeah, and if he mines all the gold and the asteroids above Earth, then all of a sudden gold is that like a real statement? Yeah. I think he will. Yeah. Um, in like the next, so all of a sudden, he, he, wait, what? Gold he's becomes, gonna he's gonna mine all the gold. In so the there's asteroids. billions yeah. of dollars of gold floating on asteroids around this planet, and Elon's gonna get up there and start mining gold, and then it's gonna. Frank, you hear this? Fall from the sky. <laughs> what are and, we and talking be, about? And be as plentiful as sand. Um, I don't know if you're serious. No, being no, we're totally serious. serious. <laughs> yeah, that's why gold is a problem because the supply isn't fixed like Bitcoin. But so he, when people but, say gold or Bitcoin. Like that's that's yeah, gold's for boomers who don't understand that. But Bitcoin, Elon can't change the supply of Bitcoin. It's the only fixed asset in the galaxy. Are you guys crazy? <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm losing my mind talking and, about and, this. And the thing is, the dollar is is turning into toilet paper. So if I, get that. I get there, that. I like, get that. Like, what is your option? You have you have to have a hard asset, hard money, and it's either gold or Bitcoin. But Elon Musk is going to destroy gold. You, you have to, I don't like, I mean, the things you're saying from someone who's like, I always thought I had a big brain, but I mean, you guys, I thought half the things you're saying to me almost seemed like a jo- like Elon Musk is going to go into the space, smash gold, and it's going to rain <laughs> plentiful like sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened to the video feed. Happen. We'll get it back up in a sec. What the fuck? Well, there you guys got it. You're seeing the Winklevoss twins explain the magic that is Bitcoin to Dave Portnoy. And yeah, I see some people talking about Dave Portnoy. I really don't know uh, his politics. All I know is that he's essentially become a cult-like figure in this whole stock trading game. And so, you know, it's a, it's a very bullish, bullish thing for him to be talking about Bitcoin. Let me see what's going on with this right now. All right. All right, we're back. So to me, this is a huge bull indicator, right? This has been almost like a meme. Let's get Elon to talk about crypto. All right, well, we can't get Elon to talk about crypto, so let's get this guy, Dave Portnoy, and all of his, you know, 1.7 million followers, many of which who are now actively engaged in the investable markets here. So we'd think that this would be a huge green flag. Of course, we get a publication like this from the Financial Times saying now is the time to invest in Bitcoin, right? You'd think that this would be a huge, we think we'd see a pop here on the Bitcoin chart. You'd think we'd see a pop here on the Bitcoin chart. This is in the Financial Times by Galaxy Fund, right? By uh, Mike Novogratz. Instead, we get the pop out of Ethereum, right? Ethereum busting through its 400 uh, resistance, obviously up about 9% on the day. This is huge. This is huge. And, you know, this is why we've been waiting for Ethereum to bust through this resistance. And it could be a fake out. Could be a fake out. No, I don't hodl gold. I don't hodl gold. Sorry. Um, but it's true. There's Supposedly, gold is as common in the universe as any other, you know, as oxygen, right? It's on asteroids all over the planet. It's very difficult to get your hands on. I've heard somewhere that's buried under sea is, you know, tens of billions or trillions of dollars worth of gold. Who knows? 
point is gold is not fixed. We do not have a fixed amount of gold. It's a chemical reaction that is common on most, I guess, planetary systems. I'm starting to get a little out of my depth here talking about the chemistry stuff, the astrophysics. But the point is here, we're talking about Ethereum busting through resistance and look at the strength on this chart. This is just showing some higher highs here, higher lows. This is awesome. And Ethereum does not have a lot of room, does not have a lot of resistance rather between here and where it's headed, which is skyward, guys. This is absolutely amazing to see. And to me, if Ethereum starts really making moves here, it's going to absolutely shock the crypto world and show you that even though we're looking at Bitcoin flashing as bullish of signs as could be, even though we're having uh, essentially Dave Portnoy come in and give us these insane uh, green flags for Bitcoin, we're seeing that Ethereum is undeniable right now. And one of the things I want you to keep in mind, I want you to keep in mind this chart right here, which is going to be covered a little by my face, so I'm going I'm to minimize it here. But this is the Bitcoin dominance chart, and you can see it is not breaking through this trend line. Let's bring it up a little more uh, detailed for you. This is the Bitcoin dominance chart through history. And we can see that there were, you know, dating back to late two or mid-2013, we can see that there were little altcoin runs. There were little recessions of the Bitcoin dominance. And then we see here for the first time a real erosion here in, you know, early 2015 of Bitcoin's dominance. Obviously, this was, I don't know if uh, Ethereum had done its sale yet. I think it done its sale at this point. Um, but this is where we start really seeing an erosion of Bitcoin. And then we see Bitcoin bounce back strong, up to 90%, right? But each time Bitcoin bounces up, it's a lower high, right? We get this 90%, then it erodes significantly throughout 2016, and we get another bounce back up. By the way, there was an ICO era going, out, going on throughout 2016, but it doesn't make it up to that 90%. It makes it up to 87% instead. And then we get, of course, the ultimate uh, altcoin season, which was the 2017 run, and then since then, we've seen Bitcoin sort of become the safe haven, right? Oh, no, a lot of these coins aren't as good as we thought they were. No, the revolution isn't coming as fast as we thought. Bitcoin is the only safe haven in this crypto industry. Let's hop back in the big boat. And now we're seeing again an erosion, right? And it's not just a one-month erosion. We're seeing now a whole year of this, a whole year of Bitcoin sliding again on dominance. And if you look here, we saw Bitcoin make a move down to, I think, 32% was the ultimate low here, something like 32%. And that was a move from 87%, right, all the way down to 32%. So if you're thinking right now, we've made a move from about 69% down to about 60%. So instead of a literal 50 a 56% move or something like that. I don't know if my math is dead on there, but essentially a 50 plus percent move, we've only seen 9%. We've only seen 9%. And this is as Bitcoin's gearing up to make a huge move skyward. I'm sorry that my head's in the way. Let me get my head out of the way a little bit here. Um, but we're seeing that this Bitcoin dominance chart, what it spells out quite clearly is that we're in for an alt cycle, the likes of which I don't think even this previous cycle will come to, rep come to resemble, come to represent. This new altcoin cycle is going to be so absolutely catastrophically, unbelievably huge. I don't even have the adjectives to describe it because this is you know, potentially going to send Bitcoin dominance down to between 20 and 30 percent, maybe even between 10 and 20 percent, right? And this is as Bitcoin is probably going to 10x right? So if Bitcoin 10Xs, if Bitcoin gets up to 50, maybe 100,000, right? That would make its market cap in the multiple of the trillions, multiple trillions. And let's go ahead and assume just for ease of math that it's a 10% of the market, or let's just call it 20%, right? Let's assume that Bitcoin dominance makes it down to 20% of the market cap, and then it's at $3 trillion, right? So 20%, that would mean it would be multiplied by five to get the total cryptocurrency market caps. And we'd have ourselves a $15 trillion market cap, 15 trillion, right? That's not guaranteed. This is just the estimation based on the past cycles, based upon the current trajectory, based upon priced estimates, right? Let's assume that Bitcoin goes on a 5X, right? Let's assume that it only does that. Let's assume that Bitcoin makes it to only 1 trillion, but it ends up at 20% of the market cap of, of dominance. So that would mean that the entire market cap makes it to 5 trillion. Guys, we're at 359 billion. 
that would mean that we have pretty much a 15x on the whole market cap. It's going to be wild times. It's going to be a transformational time. But the direction is not going to be singular. It's going to be rocky. It's going to be difficult. There are going to be crashes after crashes after crashes. And you're going to think to yourself, wow, is this worth it? Is this real? Did I get myself into something that I can't get myself out of? How can I save myself? And most of you won't make it. And that saddens me that most of you won't make it. But I hope you do. I hope you do. In more I guess light news and lighter news, we have yams plummeting to zero, burnt the hardest after price plunges to zero. This is, of course, because of a rebase bug that permanently broke the yam governance. Even though they put forth this uh, sort of voting mechanism to essentially change what was going on within the yam smart contract, they actually didn't code this thing smart enough. And yeah, they're going to try to fix it and relaunch it. But wow, did the yams, oh, they flew so high so fast and then they fell. So. You know, rest in peace to the yams. I personally, luckily, dumped my yams. I was playing. I did the I did the the yam thing for a minute. I played around, and I'm happy I got out in time um, to get my money into PCX, which we'll talk about in a second. Chainx, because that was a phenomenal result we saw today. Wow, do you guys get it? You guys get it. I can't even. Oh, wow, you guys get it. So the interesting grayscale crypto products is now is not easing up, and it's not just for Bitcoin. So you need to understand that since Grayscale's inception. This has been the growth, right? We saw an exceptional pop here in 2017. And then throughout the last few years, we've been seeing, you know, sustained growth with some, you know, meaningful pops here in, in mid-2019 when it looked like Bitcoin was going through the roof. Then we saw another pop here in, you know, early this year. And now we're seeing it once again. But if you see here, if you can see here, we can see that there's a little line popping up here that is absolutely, absolutely bullish. You see how high this popped up? Right? This is absolutely insane. And what it spells out for me is that the mainstream investment community is now starting to lick their chops once again for these crypto assets. This is the story of adoption of the biggest money bags in the world. So this grayscale production, this grayscale progress rather, is one of the most exciting pieces of news in the space. It's more exciting than yams and it's more exciting than based. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this amazing world we're in, where you can flip a dollar into $15 overnight, but just know that sword cuts both ways. And this won't always be like this. We're gonna have good times, we're gonna have hard times. But if this Bitcoin dominance chart is anything to be uh, digested, right, it's to understand that we're going to see a slide of Bitcoin dominance. Now, I believe this slide is gonna happen as Bitcoin is absolutely booming, right? Because throughout 2017, Bitcoin was blasting off from 1,000 to 20,000. It pulled a 20x. We're not even looking at a 20x as possible right now in this next direct run. I mean, it's possible, but that's not the direct, you know, that's not the first prediction, right? We're looking at 5, 10x as the, the likely sort of stock to flow model here. And so if we see this happen, this is going to be absolutely astronomical, especially as we're seeing this institutional money uh, start to get into uh, Bitcoin on a whole nother level. We're also having malware attacks take on a whole nother level, right? This is part of the game. The more money, the more criminal activity, the more risk, right? There's going to be more eyes on the space. So just know that this ransomware stuff, uh, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but just know that you got to be careful. As soon as you start trading crypto, you are putting a target on yourself. You need to clean up your tracks. You need to understand that you are now a target. And so you need to be reading up on the latest cybersecurity news. That's up to you to protect yourself. You want ultimate freedom with your money? You want to be able to reinvent money? Then you need to take on the responsibility to protect yourself and get yourself one of these, Ledger Nano. If you guys want a Ledger Nano, do me, do me a favor, comment on this video. Any comment will be entered to win. You're going to have to wait till it fully posts, though, because the chats, I don't have a way to search the chats. You have to actually make a comment on the video once we post it. <laughs> and then we also have this, which I thought was funny, because essentially they're now giving out coins for Big, Mac, Big Macs when they mess up orders. So this is, you know, essentially leading to the suspicion that we'll get a Big Mac coin. I don't know. If you guys like a Big Mac coin, do me a favor and smash that like button. And in other just blockchain news, you know, this stuff used to get me really excited. Now it doesn't really do much for me. But we have a million South Koreans now using blockchain driver's licenses. I like this, right? It's not going to make your Bitcoin, it's not going to pump your backs, right? But this stuff is good. It just shows that blockchain is becoming more of a legit technology, more trusted, more relied upon. And the every day, as my friend Mike from Bloomberg said, every day that Bitcoin doesn't fail is a day that we are winning. That's a win. 
because the only thing that I see taking this whole system down is a big hack, a big exploit, some kind of black swan. So every day that Bitcoin doesn't fail, every day that blockchain is providing critical infrastructure to the world, those are days that we can look at as huge, huge victories. And then we also have this. This is something that you need to be aware of. Yesterday, the fees on Ethereum reached an all-time high of $6.87 million. Previous all-time high, 4.55, and that was during the 2017 speculative mania. If you don't think that this is significant, then you're not following the story here. Look at Ethereum's price and look at where and look at this. This is the story of adoption. This is extremely bullish for Ethereum. It means there's more money in securing the network. It means that holding the actual token has more value. And of course, this isn't made possible without Uniswap tokens literally making people rich overnight. But just know that that won't necessarily continue at the same clip. But we do have extremely bullish factors going on. And even though this fee aspect is something that needs to get changed, it needs to be evolved. We need ETH2. We need scaling. It's something that is untenable without the game gains without the 10 X's. You don't want to pay a $20 transaction fee. It's crazy. But this is, in my opinion, extremely bullish, extremely bullish. We haven't seen this since 2017. We haven't seen this since 2017. Finally, I want to cover this news. Unstoppable uh, domains are doing this giveaway where they're giving away $7,000 in Ethereum and dot and uh, die. Sorry, I thought it was Dia, but it's actually die. I misread it the first time. They're giving away seven thousand dollars in Ethereum and die. And the rules are: you just have to download the Coinbase wallet, go to Unstoppable Domains slash contest, and uh, then you enter through the the, the DAP browser. I'm not sure at which step you would go through and use my referral link, but I'd appreciate if you guys to go to uh, to buy your referral link that you do so by clicking on my link. I have it here in the description. Um, it supports the channel. I really appreciate it. But unstoppable domains are essentially domains that run off blockchain. So they're uncensorable. They can never be taken from you. They can never be shut down. And I think they're kind of cool. You can send money easily through them. It's, it's got the, uh, the financial aspect. The wallets are built in. So these are pretty amazing uh, resources here. HODL.crypto, that's about as good a unstoppable domain as it gets. So if you guys are interested in getting a HODL.crypto domain, then go ahead and check out Unstoppable Domains and don't be afraid, uh, please use my referral link. I appreciate it. And now finally, let's review Chainx, PCX, the token we covered this morning. I pretty much said all I had to say about it this morning. Obviously, it was like a 30 minute video. Sorry again for making you guys watch a 30 minute video. Sometimes though, it just it's like that. I just, there's that much information to cover. And this, cha uh, this Chainx token just absolutely zoomed because of you guys. But this is, to me, an absolutely phenomenal project. And I'm glad you guys recognized it as such. And I'm excited because it means that my research, you know, I'm going to put that much more effort into every single coin I research because I believe that you guys deserve by far the best information. And it's my job to bring it to you. That's, that's my goal is to bring you the best information in the space. And so, you know, Chainx being the bridge into the Polkadot ecosystem, that's a phenomenal resource. I don't think we should overlook how important that is. And can it be uh, one of many bridges? Yeah, of course, there could be many bridges, right? It might not be the only one, but what have we seen about first mover advantage? What have we seen about it? Ethereum, first mover, guess what happens? Everybody uses Ethereum, even when it's clogged and you can't get your transactions through. Like I have a transaction stuck in my MetaMask that's like a MetaMask bug right now that I have to escalate to the MetaMask team, which bothers me, but the reality is I know I'm gonna get it figured out. The reality is, that Chainx will be the first mover. They're already the first mover on Polkadot, and Polkadot is the most hyped thing in the space. And so, you know, if Polkadot is what it claims to be, then this Chainx thing is going to be an absolute monster, right? Because what do we want more than anything? We want to take that amazing asset that the Winklevoss twins are explaining to Dave Portnoy, and we want to use it in things like Ethereum and things like Polkadot. So this is an amazing, amazing project. This is an amazing opportunity. And for me, the Chainx uh, project, to me, as I looked through all of the Polkadot ecosystem projects, it was very clear to me that Chainx was the one to be focusing on right now. And I believe that it has quite a lot of room to go still. I'm beyond excited about it. As I looked through, and, and we'll go through here because um, as we go through it, by the way, if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, 
I've been tweeting like a fiend. I, I, I didn't use Twitter much before this year, but as I started to pick up the content again, Twitter's become like I'm tweeting all the time and I don't have time to do videos all the time. So I highly encourage you guys, follow me on Twitter. I'm putting up quite a bit of information. Uh, some of it's sarcasm, some of it's memery, some of it's just not meant to be taken seriously. Um, but then look, you know, I, I, I haven't even covered this, but look, Binance Chain, Binance Smart Chain will unlock DeFi for BNB, Ethereum compatible smart contracts on Binance Chain. This is important stuff. This is important stuff what's going on on Twitter. So if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, I highly encourage you, Elio Trades, at Elio Trades. Very easy. And uh, stuff like this is going to change the game, right? The more interoperability, the more collaboration between these chains and these assets, it's going to bring more value to all of them, right? It doesn't take value away from one and siphon it to the other. It makes them both more valuable, right? Everything is made to be more valuable the more interoperable it is. And make no mistake, these cryptocurrency market caps are nothing, right? We have an economy worth quadrillions, right? Wrap your head around that. Quadrillions, thousands of trillions, which is millions of billions, right? Millions of billions. And right now we have 300 billion is our market cap, 359 billion. So we're 300 versus millions. That is the size of the economy, and I believe we're headed to a crypto-native economy. Not, you know, immediately, but over the course of decades, right? Over the course of years, we have millions of Xs to go, I believe, or hundreds of thousands of Xs. That's what I believe for the crypto economy. So as this stuff pops off, right, as these more interoperable chains, these more interoperable projects, as you see more value being brought to these core assets like BNB, like Ethereum, like Bitcoin, this is good for everyone. These are the pillars. These are the strong foundations. And then we see Polkadot giving them new life, new accessibility, making them flow like water. See things like Chainx being integral foundations now in that process. And we see layers, right? That's why you talk about layer zero, layer one, layer two. And I assume there will be many layers. There's no limit to that, right? Understand that every great project can be divided up into layers, and we're seeing that. And it's even better that it is. Our internet is divided up into many layers. But let's go ahead. Let's talk about the stuff you love to talk about. Let's talk about these juicy alts. And I want to get to some sort of conversation here with you guys. So let's go ahead and interact, fire away some questions, talk about some coins. As we know, Numeraire uh, got listed on Coinbase. That's why it pops so hard up here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I talked about Numeraire before. I tried to stay away from it because it's one of those Palm Beach confidential tokens. I don't like talking about stuff that other big content creators have talked about. Uh, for the most part, right, like there, there are exceptions. But for the most part, I try to stay away if, you know, someone, someone's just this week talked about some big coin. I, I try to wait because I, I don't want to be uh, hopping on those trends. I also worry that when things get overhyped in any particular moment, it'll lead to, you know, a crash or, or a pullback that'll make everybody feel bad. And so I try to find things that, that don't have light shed on them. That's my goal. And Numeraire just felt like, oh, God, since it, since it got that uh, coverage by uh, Tika Tuari, if you guys don't know who that is, you know, he's a pump master. Um, yeah, th that was this pump right here, right? That was this pump right here in uh, May. And then look at that, <laughs> look at that, that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy, down here from $6 up to 50. Yep, congrats to the Numeraire holders. It's a cool project, right? They're using data mining to try to build a smarter hedge fund. I think it's cool stuff. Um, but again, you know, stayed away from it and uh, I'm, I'm happy for everyone who got into it. But predicting something like a chain link pump or, or a Coinbase pump, it's very difficult to do. And uh, even though I will say, if you guys were following the channel, I did predict two of the coins that were put on Coinbase this month. If you watched my 10 coins to 10 million video, two of those coins actually made it to Coinbase this month and they exploded. Those were banned in Ocean. So congrats to anyone who was on those. Um, let me check this out. Hey man, take a look at Origin Trail. They have some crazy real world adoption happening. Still very under the radar. You know what's funny? I wanna go to my channel right now and I wanna look because I have some Origin Trail and I wanna see how crazy bad my old thumbnails are. Let's look at how bad these, uh, these old videos are. I have some Origin Trail videos from I think, I think 2018, there we go, look at that. <laughs> Who's that young man two years ago? So if Origin Trail pops up and pops off, you know I told you first. And uh, yeah, top five supply chain cryptos for supply chain logistics. Big smile. Key sectors for your crypto portfolio. Here I have, do I have track on here? I don't have track listed. 
But at the any, any rate, you can see I have Origin Trail. Uh, I think I mentioned it in here. I have mentioned it in a lot of videos. You can see a lot of these videos are popping up. Uh, these are videos where I covered Origin Trail in depth for years. So let's check out Track right now. I really believe that you know these blockchain or these logistics uh, companies could do really well. The only problem is what we saw is that you're gonna see the big boys, right? Like the Walmarts are just building their own systems. And yeah, they'll have partnerships with VeChain, they'll use them for this, they'll have partnerships with Origin Trail, they'll use them for that. But is it gonna pump your bags? Like, is this the best investment for you? This is what I thought. I thought these are just gonna be it. These are going to dominate the space. Origin Trail, Ambrosis, uh, VeChain. I thought all these coins, uh, Walton Chain, I thought they were gonna dominate the space. Maybe they very well might. However, I think what I've seen is that the tokenomics and the way that it's structured is not making me so confident, right? We're seeing these big companies just build their own supply chain logistics blockchains, right? We're seeing all these blockchains like Unibright and all those chains essentially making it so easy for people to create their own blockchains uh, and other types of enter, uh, you know, blockchain for enterprise stuff. I'm not fully convinced that this is where I want my money personally, uh, but is Origin Trail a phenomenal project? Heck yeah, it is. It absolutely is. And I'm sure on the business end, I'm sure for the people working for the company that they have a tremendous amount to gain. I'm sure their contracts are huge. Is this going to lead to an appreciation of your token value? That's another question. That's another question, and I've yet to see enough data for me to confidently recommend any of these supply chain cryptos personally. So that's what I personally am, am hung up on when it comes to track, is that I've seen them make amazing business deals. I've seen them, you know, look at this. When I go to their website and I look at their alliance, right, I'm sure they're gonna see just a ridiculous amount of partnerships. I have an on Tech Academy. <laughs> yes, this is, the, this is the big retailer I was expecting to see. Um, Deloitte, right? Where's where's all their partners? They have like a ridiculous list of partners. Members. Um, is this it? Is this it? I'm not sure. As you can see, they have a lot of partners here. But is this where... They have like crazy big retail partners. I don't know if I'm seeing it right. Um, I don't know if I'm seeing it right, but at, at any rate, I know that they have a ton of ecosystem partners, and this is not jumping out at me as, as to the right page for this. But yeah, they're they're doing well on the business side. It kind of reminds me of Ripple, right? Ripple, phenomenal software provider, phenomenal uh, software solutions pro provider as a SaaS business, software as a service. However, they are not delivering in the token appreciation. It was all the hype that they would become essentially the way that all banks would transfer funds internationally. Not so. Instead, what we got was Swift updated their system, and now all these banks are building their own blockchain networks, just like JP Morgan Coin. And so XRP has been great at selling their software to banks, but they've been really bad at selling their token to banks. But supposedly, even XRP are now trying to move into the smart contract space. They're trying to fund dApps on their platform. They mentioned a $100 million gaming fund some time ago, though we've seen very little investment on that side. So I guess for me, um, yeah, for me, I, I genuinely am interested, but at the same time, I have reservations about these coins that are really more sort of like their business fundamentals are strong, but their token fundamentals are not coming along for the ride. And I think that's what I'm seeing for the, uh, essentially the, uh, what, what is it, the uh, logistics space, like Origin Trail, as well as, unfortunately, XRP. And maybe XRP is just too big right now, but, you know, I certainly hope for everyone there is, you know, how many... 10 billion, you know, 13 billion dollars in XRP. Certainly hope for all of those token holders that it works out. Look into eight hours. BitBoy talked about this earlier. So I love BitBoy. BitBoy is an amazing guy. Uh, you know, I, I jokingly refer to him as dad. Uh, he's one of my favorite people, but I hate that project. <laughs> I just, nobody plays board games. Nobody's going to buy that. I, I don't think so. Personally, I'm, I'm not going anywhere near it. Elliot, question about Dia. What's your long-term view on it? Some people are saying it will dump after the 18th. So yeah, we, you know, there's no way to quite tell exactly what's going to happen. I think there's some tokens being unlocked with Dia. But to me, the narrative right here is pretty clear to see, right? We're seeing that Chainlink is now sitting at over $6.5 billion. $6.5 billion. Then we see Band chasing right up behind it. And the reason why Band is so explosive is because it's actually 
arguably even a better product and it's making huge partnerships. Their documentation is phenomenal and they just, they're catching the same hype. This is the Pepsi. I made this analogy when Band was sitting at like 70 or $60 million when I first started covering Band. I said, this is Pepsi. Pepsi is gonna run and the difference is we're not measuring these coins based on their annual sales, their quarter over quarter growth. There's no real way for us to measure what Band or Chainlink should be worth. This is a new paradigm of sorts, right? They're collateralizing data to enter blockchains and they're making partnerships with the Chinese government and Google and who knows how much that could be. It could be trillions of dollars. And so there's not really a grounded way to measure these tokens. And so with this environment, with this narrative, we're looking at, you know, essentially we have, uh, I got on a page where it had the oracles. Give me the oracles, give me the oracles. Um... There was a way for me to see the oracles at CoinGecko, but essentially Dia is the lowest cap oracle and they have, want to be the Bloomberg for oracles. Obviously, that might be a little bit silly to say that, but they want to focus on specialized in financial data. And I believe in niching down. Niching down is sometimes a way to get capture more uh, value. And if you're niched down into the financial uh, data sector and you actually start forming any partnerships, I'm excited. I, I'm waiting to see if Dia announces some partnerships. And if they do, this thing could absolutely fly. It's sitting at what, like 20 million market cap? It's absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I took a little hit today, it looks like. Yep, 250, sitting at a market cap of $20 million. So right, so you're looking at band being over a 10x from here, and you're looking at Chainlink being a, a 30x from there. So you're looking at a, a 300x for it to catch up with Chainlink or something like that. I don't know if my math's on there. But the, the odds to me of this trend continuing of the narrative of oracles being essentially the most price reactive assets in the space, that's a narrative, That's those are the odds that I'd like to favor because so far throughout this bull run, it's been undeniable that any oracle with any kind of hype is getting sent through the moon and beyond. And so Dia to me is just such an easy bet that it, it's easy to sink my teeth into, right? And, and I don't mind holding this thing because I think if this thing starts to actually deliver the partnerships that shows that it is the Bloomberg of financial services or of, of uh, decentralized oracles, then this thing's gonna pop to $10, gonna pop to $100, I don't know, but it's gonna pop really high. And so I'm holding on, I have my bags packed. What else, what else? Anchor, $20 to pitch a coin, haha. -ha. Yeah, you guys, I, I don't do this, right? I, my goal isn't to just read off coins to you because I have you, right? I could read off, look, there's what, 6,000 coins? I could go down and discuss every single coin, but I'm not trying to do that. I don't want to pollute my message, right? I don't want to water down my data. I want you guys to know when I'm bringing you a coin that I want you to pay attention because I've done my research. And so, you know, if I did a 30-minute video yesterday and I put out, uh, and I'm doing a live right now that's more about a macro analysis, I'm not ready right now to give you guys another coin, even though I have a bunch, right? I have a bunch. We could even go through, I think what would be healthy is for me to go through some of these polka dot coins. Let's do the polka dot coins. Talk about those a little bit uh, because what's a good way to, I think XRT was a good way to find this list. Saw a few of these lists where, yeah, there we go. So we have these polka dot projects by market cap. And so this Robonomics project is interesting, right? I like it. I like the Robonomics project. However, as I said in my video, uh, I just don't see it as moving today. I see it as moving in the future. Who knows? This might be worth a trillion dollars one day, but it's not going to be tomorrow. And robo uh, robotics in general is a huge, amazing bet for the future. But again, we're just not living in that world today. So I'm not trying, you know, we're living in a, in a momentary world, right? This is crypto world is firing off in changing in the matter of seconds. And so, you know, for me to recommend you a coin that's not gonna pop for potentially seven years, it's just not the game we're playing right now. Does that mean that it's not a great project? That's not what I'm saying. I'm sure it is a great project. Everything I read about it seemed phenomenal. They seem to be deeply embedded in uh, the Polkadot ecosystem, and they seem to have strong connections to Gavin Wood, who created Polkadot, a substrate framework. Um, Energy Web, obviously, amazing token. I made a huge video about it. You guys loved it. This thing got sent up like something after I dropped that video, it, it grew like 100 million in market cap. So I'm happy, my bags are packed. Uh, Ocean, again, guys, I put it on my list this month. I believe in this stuff. This kind of stuff I believe in popping before the robotic stuff, even though they're part of the same sort of issue here, which is that uh, the decentralized cloud, uh, here, let me bring up uh, Ocean. Ocean Protocol. 
So th the way that they allow for people to build marketplaces uh, for a decentralized economy with the data marketplaces, this is something that, that could catch on very quickly, right? Because these are uh, bottlenecks that are stopping these things from existing. And even though I believe that robotics might be a little further along, AI and robotics are going to need these types of marketplaces as foundational infrastructure for them to thrive, right? The actual computing power that's required uh, for these uh, AI and robotic systems is significant. So they need things like Ocean already set up. Uh, Kusama. Now, I really like Kusama. It's awesome what they're doing. It's really awesome. But I also am not like 100% sure how it's going to interact with Dot after, you know, essentially the full release of, of uh, Polkadot. I'm sure it's going to have its role. Um, but I'm also not, I'm not like a thousand percent, right? I'm not a thousand percent on how that's going to work. Seller is cool. Another super scalable blockchain. Again, narrative. We have Ethereum highly clogged. We have Seller that's promising insane speeds. So again, is could Seller pull an Elrond? Uh, that's really the question. Could Seller pull an Elrond, you know? Um, let's see here. Edgeware... So yeah, and then we also have Edgeware, which also is a pretty cool project, the first Polkadot smart contract platform. And uh, let's go to their website here. So as I understand, all of Polkadot is self-improving, right? Um, so I'm not sure if, if that is something that is a staple of Edgeware. It seems like all of this is sort of forkless, right? You can essentially upgrade the protocol without forking, which is huge. And uh, yeah, I mean, to me, it seems like a great project. Uh, but again, more importantly, this thing's already doing insane growth, right? This thing's already over 100 million. Uh, Acro is really the next project down, and I already put Acro on multiple of my coin videos, so I'm hoping that my audience was already well established and well aware of Acro. And then uh, Share Ring and Katen, their, their rewards uh, program, very cool projects, obviously, but I think you know, had just gotten their pumps. And so uh, I was trying to, uh, yeah, XOR, Sola, uh, Sola, Sora, sorry, Sora. Uh, this was absolutely a monstrous pump, right? Where I can't do a video on a coin that's gone up this much this recently. So as I started to look through the Polkadot coins, I was just like, hey, you know, they're all great projects. They're all very interesting. And probably if you have the ability, if you have the wealth, I would own all of them, right? But if you're looking for something that could grow your uh, portfolio faster, it just seemed like PCX was the most undervalued because this bridge, as I compared it to something like REN, uh, REN VM, this bridge, uh, REN's valued at you know 260 million, and this thing was at 26 million. It was one tenth of the size, and I, I saw a statistic like they had something like over 9,000. Bitcoin locked up already in uh, uh, Chainx. And so that was, look, this is what uh, they were bragging about was the $100 million volume. Uh, yeah, so this is the $100 million volume video if they're going to play it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm. this was the $100 million volume figure that Ren was bragging about. And it seems like they've already hit that for Chainx and they're one tenth of the size of market cap. So I'm not big on just hoping for things like robotics, even if I believe in the industry long term. I'm big on saying, hey, this is holding this value right now. Look at Chainlinks holding a six and a half billion dollar value. Look at Band. Now look at Dia. Look at Ren. Now look at Chainx. These are the types of comparisons where you can actually make a data driven approach. Because if you don't have data to go on, which a lot of the times we don't, because paradigms shift and, and sometimes hard to measure these things. Uh, just like doing TA in this bull run is a little tricky, but. Uh, that's that's what I thought was a, a reasonable approach to understanding how undervalued Chainx was. <clears throat> Thoughts on DOS? Again, tiny Oracle. Uh, I think it has a lot of room to grow. Feels like this cycles net five tokens. <laughs> I hope not, man. I certainly hope not. Yes, thank you guys. Uh, MXC, apparently a scam, apparently withholding user funds. So uh, if I could save you guys from that, it's my pleasure. Hopefully, as a community, we can put enough pressure on them uh, to just return those funds. So happy to help when I can. Uh, Card Cardiashian coin. <laughs> I think they're talking about Cardia chain. 
Alrighty, guys. Any other questions? Thank you for your work, bro. Thoughts on Utrust? So, I am a big fan of Utrust. I'm a big fan of what they do. And I'm also going to be doing a little bit of communication with the team because I think they have some exciting stuff coming up. I'm wondering whether they're going to make it for my video on September Coins. You'll have to tune in to find out. But I promise you that I am big fan of Utrust. I always have been. Uh, whether or not they're the right buy for the moment, I don't know. How's Acro? I just talked about Acro. TFD. I'm not sure what TFD is. Have I looked into PureX? So I actually wanted to make a video on PureX. I've been wanting to make a video on PureX. There's just not enough information out there. You know, like I can't bring you guys this information. Seeing how you guys are reacting to the content, right? We have over 1,200 people in here watching this. Seeing how you guys are following the content, the type of reaction that it's having, that's a tremendous amount of responsibility for me. And so I can't just bring you something like PureX where I have no idea how, how long-term this project is. I have no idea what kind of volume they're going to have. I have no idea. They, their documents are just... Oh, sorry. PureX, the network. Where is where's this thing? So I've seen a lot of people tweeting about it. I've seen it, but I went into their Telegram. I got almost no responses. I got no information. No, I don't want to go into their Telegram. Yeah, see their, their website. Oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting, right? We have a DEX, we have lending, but it just, to me, it just feels like a little bit stuck together. Who knows, it could surprise me. Um, but I wanted to know what the secret sauce is. Show me some secret sauce, right? They have a roadmap. It starts in Q3 of this year and it ends in Q4 of this year. Info at purex.network, you know, an email you could route through Gmail in minutes. Uh, this website I could put together in 20 minutes. This, dot, this graph is just generic. The white paper, you know, so just a picture of Manhattan. I don't know. None of it jumped out at me, right? I could write a, I could, what is this? Like a six page white paper, right? Like I could have written this thing in a couple of minutes, right? I could have written this thing in one hour, I think. And so uh, I just don't know what to say, guys. There's just not enough to go on. Not enough to go on. Definitely not enough to recommend to you. If you're in Purex and you make a lot of money off it, congratulations. I hope you do well. Let's get off this page. I don't want it on my, on my feed. Digibyte is up 20x. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a really old token. XRP made it to be 10,000k. You are great, sir. Thank you. Plutus DeFi is a better Purex. Check it out. Yeah, Plutus DeFi looks legit. It's uh, I always get Plutus DeFi and Pluton. Uh, th there's like two Plutuses, and it does my head in. They should have figured that out. They should really, someone needs to rebrand. Is it bad to invest in ChainX since it doubled? Um, you know, hard to say. I personally see ChainX going a lot higher, right? But whether that happens today or tomorrow, whether it has a reset point, whether it bounces, all those things are unpredictable. Uh, so I don't know what to say. You know, if you're willing to tolerate potentially a short-term uh, pullback, knowing that it has a lot more room to grow, in my opinion, especially as Polkadot gets up and running, that's up to you, right? That, it's up to you as to how quickly you'd like to see your gains. Some people only buy the dips at certain points of support. It's it's a personal question, but you know I'm holding on to my uh, my chain X big time. Hire me as a researcher. I pay, I get paid in altcoins. Uh, yeah, sure. Hit me up in Telegram. Show me your stuff. I've been looking to expand. I might start bringing on some researchers. Uh, I just the channel is growing so fast. You guys rock. We're doing about a thousand new subs a day. This is the fastest growing crypto community in the entire space, and that's thanks to you guys. And I've been working my butt off to try to bring you guys the best quality of information, so I appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate it, and I won't squander this trust you've put in me. Um, is Energy Web Token a good buy now? I think it's always a good buy. This thing's going to be huge, personally. Uh, swipe. I, I, I talked about Swipe at $1.50, or, or I don't know, is it like $1.20 when I talked about Swipe? Uh, yeah, I mean, hard to say, right? This thing's been mooning, so I, I would wait for maybe a, a pullback. Full vid on Acro coming. Yeah, sure, maybe I'll do an Acro vid. I love Acro. Tron to the moon. I don't know. RSR, RSR, RSR. Yeah, I like RSR. I like it a lot. I think it's useful. It hasn't been performing that well, though. Can Katen hit 10K in a year? Um, I don't know, right? Because it, it's a little tricky, right? Because it's a rewards token for staking another token. So I need to look more into that. I need to look more into that. Help with Math Wallet. Uh, yeah, you want to check out their customer support. All right, guys. 
I see a lot of the same questions coming up. I think I've answered it. So if you guys didn't get your answer, do me a favor and go back, rewind a little bit, but do me a favor before you guys get out of here. And we got almost 1,200 people in here, only 490 likes. There's something going on here. Do me a favor, guys. Smash that like button. Give me a like spike. If you guys aren't already subscribed to Elio Trades, I highly encourage you guys to hit that sub button. If this morning is any proof, it's that you need to be made aware whenever I put out new content. And as you could see, this thing almost spiked almost, to, I think it wicked up to like $15 or something like that on a hot bit. So if you guys were part of that, it pretty much pulled a uh, almost a 4X, almost a 400% after I put that video out. So you're gonna wanna be putting the bell notification on. You're gonna wanna know each and every time I put out content because I'm putting my heart and soul into this. I'm doing everything I can do to bring you guys the best information. I'm working my butt off, sometimes not even sleeping. And I hope it's benefited you. I hope it makes you, uh, it, it betters your life. That's in the end, right? And so if that is a value to you, then I encourage you to hit that sub button. I encourage you to hit that bell notification. I love you guys. You guys mean the world to me. It's been an amazing journey so far. But as you can see, we ain't seen nothing yet. So hold on. It's going to be a long road. It's going to be a good road. And it's been a blessing being with you guys. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you very soon on the next episode.